Good day, gentlemen. Welcome to our first staff meeting. I would like to first introduce you guys to my assistant manager right here. He is specifically here just to do whatever he is told to do. Uh, let's let's go around the room and uh, let's introduce ourselves. Starting with the the head of youth development. Would you like to uh, Would you like to kick us off? I just want to meet everybody. You know. Siva plea. Siva play. You said you wanted the French youngsters this year. Uh, I bought a scarf. I'm working on it, boss. I'll be there. We're going to get the best ones. Okay. Uh, how about the physio? You get over there? Yeah, boss. I'm, I'm just working on something real quick. Uh, just, uh, just, just a sec, boss. I'll get it. Don't worry. Oh! Does anybody have a band-aid? Fun, 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 interesting group. Uh, what about the goalkeeping coach? You good? Hey, what's up, boss? How you doing? Oh, oh it did the wind. You couldn't pull it. Oh, it's easy, right? You just, ooh. Boss, you okay? Okay, uh, the U20 coach. Hey, coach. We're not going to talk about how well I do my job. Instead, we're going to talk about how I always look so young so I can bond with that youth team I'm coaching. And that is Harry's, a personal care brand that is revolutionizing shaving. It's a premium, hassle-free way to take care of the ridiculous amount of hair I have on my face. Oh yeah, look at that smooth shave. Oh, oh no way, dude. That's actually really good. They've just released their sharpest ever blades, and they're still the same low price of only $1.75 each. Get this trial set for only $3.95. A close and comfy shave your skin will thank you for, along with a free shower gel that smells so good. They also have amazing gifting sets on the site that make amazing stocking fillers. Every youth player on the team remarked about it. Redeem your trial set for £3.95 in the description, and you'll receive a free shower gel. Everyone at the club can have a clean, beautiful shave like this. Get their set from Harry's online. The link in the description for £3.95. Stuff some stockings, 1% of proceeds to charity. What do you say? We're gonna need to do something about this. As you might have just seen from that intro, managing your staff can be rather complicated. The larger the club, the more different staff positions you have to manage. And there's so many different staff positions and so many different coaching attributes. It's hard to know exactly what to be looking for in order to build the best staff possible, which I'm going to go ahead and tell you right now is virtually impossible. There are so many members of staff that are actually in the game. The building, the perfect staff of the people that you can afford. Uh, was that a voice crack? Perfect. It is hard to build the perfect staff that you can afford that wants to be on your team, right? And is literally better than everybody else. The key is to be able to build essentially the best staff that you can in the circumstances in a timely fashion because we don't want to be spending hours every off season specifically signing up our staff members, even though uh, have I done it before? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I have. Definitely. 100%. If you want to see this sort of stuff in practice, I've adopted a new nickname, which is Zealand. I didn't know if you knew I streamed on Twitch. Uh, good luck with that one, Reese. Shannon, I just, somebody commented that. Comments are always funnier than I could ever be. Let's start at the beginning. The ass man, which we start with is assistant manager. I didn't just curse for the first time. That's what I have for. Now, your assistant manager is actually the most fluid position along with the general manager slash director of football that you have in your entire staff. Now on my Twitch save, I am Oriental Dragon FC in Portugal, real team. I have selected this assistant manager specifically because the ass man here does what I need him to do. And you're thinking, well, what do you mean does what you need him to do? Well, that you're probably one of those people that's never actually clicked on staff and gone to responsibilities. And I know this is super overwhelming, which is why I prefer to kind of click down them one at a time. Your assistant manager can get assigned whatever you want your assistant manager to get assigned. So like the selection of your U19 team, absolutely. You can have them handle a lot of different things and your general manager and director of football are the same way. So you are going to want to pay attention to the rest of this video to tell you what attributes import are important for other things. And then you can get your assistant or director of football specifically to do that thing. 
For assistant managers, typically what you can have them do is you can have them give team talks uh, for you. You can have them manage your, your friendlies, which everybody on the face of the earth should have their assistant manager managing their friendlies. They are, of course, one of the people that you can use to appraise uh, all of your first team players. They are part of your backroom advice section, which we're going to be going over at the end. And they can handle coaching different sections as well, which is more important when you're at smaller clubs. We'll be talking about that later in the coaching training section. If it sounds like I'm saying we'll talk about everything later. That's because I just gave you the short. And then the long version of why assistant managers first and also just the last thing you need to know about, even though it feels more important than that, right? Now we get back into the staff section to really get into this. And in the coaches section, it's important to remember uh, that the assistant manager now actually counts as one of the coaches. There used to be a separate assistant coach section, right? But it's not there anymore. I don't know why just something to keep in mind and we'll just continue working our way through the coaching team so next up on the list is the head of youth development obviously we're not in the meat of the coaching stuff yet and head of youth development i've made whole videos on you know how to get the best out of your youth intake but what you need to look for in the head of youth development and to keep it brief is you want somebody that has a good personality because their personality will rub off on the players that come in through your youth intake you want somebody that has a knowledge of the country if they don't you want somebody who is not horrifically unadaptable you want at least decent adaptability so that they can learn the country fairly quickly only cost you like a year of bad and youth intake until they learn it uh, and you also want judging player ability and judging player potential so they can find the players. I don't typically use my head of youth development to run youth training as much, but that's why working with youngsters is highlighted as well. Typically, it's just that personality and it's the judging player ability and judging player potential and the knowledge of the world that you need to focus on. And all they're really doing when you have a whole coaching team in place is bringing that youth intake in. So good luck to them. And remember, no matter how good your head of youth development is, it's always more than 50% luck, always. And then that brings us to specialty coaches, which brings us to training in general, which is probably the number one thing that people stress out about when it comes to coaches. You know, something like a physio is pretty easy. It's pretty point and shoot. And it's probably not why you clicked on this definitive guide while getting the best training out of your coaches that's probably why you clicked on this video. And with that, I am going to attempt to scare you because I'm going to show you something that to me is terrifying. Math. There are a lot of FM coach calculators down there, but FM Guido, Guido, definitely guide Guido. FM Guido has actually presented this table that shows you how coaching stars are calculated and coaching stars or if you go into training and coaches and then edit coach assignments you can see the stars of all of your coaches at various training sections and you can see the coach workload on the bottom those stars determine how well each of these aspects of the game are being coached from goalkeeping shot stopping to quickness in fitness training how well all of that is being coached when you put it in training uh, when you put it in your training regimes is down to this and how those star ratings are determined or a combination of determination motivation and discipline what i call the holy trinity what they here have called ddm which is in my opinion much less creative but <laughs> then you have the other attributes that are specific to the coaching -ness, and those are added to the holy trinity so you see it, when we're looking for tactical coaching you take two times the tactical rating so if we go to pwn's order so our assistant manager right and we go to tactical coaching two times that is 18 plus the ddm which is 14 11 and 12. i don't want to do the math reese is going to get out a calculator and put the number up over here that's the rating and then you can put it on this table and you know where the stars are going to be before you sign the person and this table is from last year but this system for deciding the stars of coaches in the game has not changed. They've just switched some of the names around. The basic system is still the same, even though the table still uses terminology and stuff from last year. As such, determination, discipline, and motivating are always important. I mean, when you look at the table, when you, any coaching area, fitness, uh, from, from fitness to goalkeeping to coaching, any other aspect, determination, discipline, and motivating are all important. Not all equally important through all of them, but they are always important but they are not the most important thing. You take somebody with a little bit lower Holy Trinity that has a little bit higher actual coaching attributes in the area. Got it? 
So what I want you to understand now that you are armed with this knowledge and you can just look at the table and search, well, I'm looking for the Holy Trinity and I'm looking for, well, you know, defending and whatever, because that was already highlighted, right? When you go to goalkeeping coach, like that stuff, that stuff is already highlighted. So you knew going to the coaching that that was fine, but you're not always going to get five-star coaches in these situations. I mean, I'm over here making this tutorial. I've got one and a half stars on these people because this is the size of the coaching staff that I am allowed to have. You're, you're a bad club and you're looking for balance in one of these situations. You probably don't want to have somebody that's hyper-focused at one specific thing. So I got a goalkeeping coach to take care of that. I got a fitness coach to take care of this. The fitness coach is constantly overwhelmed because particularly in preseason, uh, you see the heavy workloads. So now I'm going to dump that we're gonna see how we can keep all of this off of very heavy, which we've managed to do almost and keep a few stars active everywhere else. My goal is to balance the workload so that they're actually able to coach effectively in all disciplines because if the workload is very heavy, the players complain and they don't develop as well. And then I drop my headset and the world starts falling apart. So you need to frame what kind of coaches you'll be able to get based off of the, the staff that's there when you get to the club. So when you get to the club, find the best coach and you should be able to find somebody that's at that level at, at, at every position. If you do not have enough coaches allowed to do that, then you're just going to have to work with what you have and try to find some people with some decent Holy Trinity and go from there. How do you actually do that? Well, you go into staff search, you go to edit, uh, and then you, um, we have a Chinese requirement in the Twitch save that is mandated by the board that is painful. You go to the coaching role, you say, hey, I want a coach. Uh, I want motivating, discipline, and determination. I want them to be at least 12 is the rule of thumb that I always, always hear. Uh, but obviously, if you're at a worse club, you're not typically going to be able to do that. So like if I'm looking for somebody that's a better offensive coach, I'll go down to 11s, uh, and then I will go to coaching attributes, and then we will just sort by attacking. And there's, you know, there's one guy here, and that guy is actually a fantastic... Can I sign him? He wants way too much money. That happens. The solution for that problem, if you're a small club like I currently am, is you go to the job center and go ahead and post an advert. It's down in the bottom right corner. Post an advert for that position like I just accidentally did for my goalkeeping coach, the U19s. And then a week later, you'll get an update with a screen of players that will accept the wages that your club offers and you can go through them and pick the best candidate if you delay it an extra week or two it adds more and more candidates to the search and that way you don't have to go sifting through mountains of people that don't want to accept the amount of money that you can offer them very useful and if you're ever in the pick area and you're like shoot i i just forgot what zealand said about heads of youth development you can drop this down and then click whatever it is and it will take the generically highlighted important things and just allow you to search for them, right? You're gonna have to adjust a little bit by clicking this plus minus up here at the top, but you will be able to find them. Something to keep in mind as you sign goalkeeping coaches and fitness coaches is that while you're training on your U19s, right? You go to training, um, let me separate this. I have to go to responsibilities, training. I'm gonna take control of the general training of my youth teams, which pops out the training over here. Then if I go to training and coaches, you will see that the goalkeeping coach and the fitness coach are both down here. So a senior team goalkeeping and fitness coach works with the whole club, which is the reason to not make everybody a coach because just coaches work with just the senior and reserve teams. They don't work with the youth teams. Specific goalkeeping and fitness coaches work with everybody. They will not be set up the same way. Like obviously on the senior team, he's set up like this, but I come down here, it's like that. So if you wanna take control of it and set it up the right way, then you can. I don't really care about my U19s because I have no staff for it and I have no players down there. Let's move on to something that's actually new for Football Manager 2021 in the coaching team, and that would be your performance analyst. This is not really new in terms of what it does. So the performance analyst and the recruitment analyst, which are two separate departments and positions, they all both come out of what was in past years called the data analyst, it's been split into. What they did was allow you to have match preview and match review training sessions, which I am a huge proponent of, you know, right click match review, right click match preview. It's a nice little training session that works on your tactical familiarity and your team cohesion and your sharpness. And they also, in previous years, just the data analyst would be 
scouting around the world for players that had standout stats, very analytical stuff. Third most shots in the league. Maybe you want to look at this guy. He's got one of the highest average ratings. His pass completion percentage is one of the best. Those would come through your scouting center and you go, huh, that's neat. Well, now those have been broken into two separate positions. So the performance analyst is in charge of analyzing the information that happens in the match itself. So you get the pre and post-match analysis inbox event. This would be the post-match analysis inbox event that I just received for my 5-3 win in the last match we played on stream. I can see the length of passes, the way we're playing, the direction of passes, the average position, the XG, uh, and you can you know expand upon all of this different stuff to get more information. They also give you a little write-up about the player that performed the best and why they are important. Uh, you can click on the full post-match analysis report. And in your staff responsibilities and scouting, you see that providing team analysis reports, providing opposition analysis reports, uh, goes directly to your performance analyst or your head performance analyst. I suppose we should switch that up. Your performance analyst needs to have tactical knowledge. The performance analyst needs to understand how the game works, and they also have to use their unique attribute, which is analyzing data. And if there's any difference between your head performance analyst and your perf other performance analyst, it is the fact that the head performance analyst needs a little bit more of a mental kick. Now they've taken the step of highlighting determination. And typically what's that, what that is going to indicate to me is that all of a sudden the mentals are influencing the department and those below them. That's typically what the head position has to do with in football manager. And it looks as though that's going to happen again here. Then just for the sake of killing two birds with one stone, you have your recruitment analysts. Now you don't get a head recruitment analyst for some reason you just have like a, a performance analyst department you don't have a recruitment analyst department they include judging player ability and they don't really care the tactical knowledge is not important and not going to affect the way that they do their job these are not easy positions to fill with particularly talented people at lower levels uh, and the differences that you would be able to notice between uh, a less accomplished analyst and a more accomplished analyst. It, that, that's a hard contrast to make in tests and everything else. You want somebody in the position, you want to make them as good as possible, but their influence is more abstract. Certainly, it depends on how you apply the data more so than what the data actually is. But that's it for your coaching department. That That's going to take us to the medical team, which might feel simple. It's a little more complicated than even I believed at various points in my life. Now with physios, I had always just looked at physiotherapy, thrown everything else to the breeze and just tried to get somebody with 20 physiotherapy. But the more I've read up on the subject to make this definitive guide, I was wrong. I've been wrong for years. And that's because fitness and the Holy Trinity are going to affect the effectiveness of your physio, which has probably cost me a few injuries over the years. Obviously the physiotherapy attribute that you see here in the medical section of coaching, that is going to be the most important thing. But in a similar looking equation and one that FM Guido actually put together itself, that is a ballpark estimate of how good the physio is out of the tests that they were able to do. So you want somebody with basic holy trinity, you want somebody with not bad fitness, and then great physiotherapy. Well, the physio works to prevent and help recover injuries faster. The sports science department is there to present you with the susceptibility to injury and, and present you with those pre-match fitness things where they go, hey man, hey, this guy is this likely to get hurt. And the better they are at sports science, the more accurate the information is. There is no other attribute that plays into it, and that's what they do. You don't really have to tell them to do any of it either. So when they go, hey, this dude probably needs a rest, if they're a good sports scientist, they probably need a rest. And that brings us on to our scouting and transfer team. Now, scouts are a complicated beast. Their influence is always abstract because you'll never know about the players that they could have found if they were better, right? So you, you never know how much the bad scout is influencing you in term in compared to the good scout what we know for sure is that adaptability is important because if you are sending this person to a place that they have no knowledge of the faster and higher the higher their adaptability is the faster they can acquire knowledge of the area judging player ability and judging player potential are also incredibly important now you could be using some scouts specifically to look for first team players now that is probably a good way to set up your scouting team now 
probably it is because then you can find people that are better at just judging player ability than trying to balance the two. Or if you have somebody that's just looking for high potential players, get somebody that has super high judging player potential, but might not have great judging player ability. That doesn't really matter for you. You want to know the potential. The adaptability is must, but not because if they already have knowledge of the country you want to send them to scout or the area you want to send them to scout, then the adaptability doesn't matter nearly as much. It is safe to assume as well as a tiebreaker that determination is always important because one of the most, just the, the single most important attribute behind the scenes all the time, even though it's not particularly more important than discipline and motivating when you're talking about coaches, even for players, is just the overall determination level of the scout. The higher the determination, the better the person is always going to be behind the scenes in Football Manager, whether they're working on the field as a player or whether they're working to find players for you in Zimbabwe. Putting together your scouting team, I will typically try to get people from all around the world, but I'm not willing to sacrifice a ton of attributes to do it. And when it comes to setting up your scouting, that's really a topic for a different video, but I have made videos like that in the past, and I'm sure I will make another one to break it down in Football Manager 21. Your chief scout is just the person that is going to be presenting reports to you uh, and is going to be present at your recruitment meeting, which happens the beginning and the end of every transfer window in FM 21, and I'm assuming going forward into other FMs as well. Usually I just try to make it my best scout. There's some hearsay that man management might be important to manage your scouting team, but I handle my own scouting and so should you. So it doesn't matter. <laughs> Next is uh, the loan manager. Now this is something that I do not have in my Twitch save, but it's also something that I never, I never use. And do not be afraid to not use a staff role. And if you do want to use a loan manager, more power to you. I don't use it because I like to micromanage when I'm loaning out my young players. If you don't want to do that, be my guest. The loan manager is somebody that you can put in charge of handling, finding outgoing loans for players that you put on something called the developmental list, which you might have never heard before. But if you go to transfer, you can add to the developmental list. Your loan manager will then look to loan them out. You set this up in staff responsibilities and the loan manager looks for those moves. So you need a good man management, be able to handle these sorts of things. They send reports back on the players that are out on loan. So judging player ability and potential is also nice. But in my opinion, not necessary for a good loan manager, just the man management, uh, the negotiation, and surprisingly, analyzing data. That's something that you need to focus on for a loan manager because they need to analyze the data that's coming back from the teams. Makes sense once you think about it. So when you get a loan manager, you just it's staff responsibilities, transfers, contracts, you put them in charge of this, organizes loan moves for young players who need development. That's it. We've already talked about recruitment analysts, and then you have something called a technical director. Now, nobody had any idea what this was when we first saw it coming out in FM 19, 20. I, I forget. <laughs> when did it come out? Who knows? The FM technical director and the technical director in real life is in charge of your coaching staff. Another position that you do not need if you micromanage your coaching staff, but maybe you have a U18s team you don't want to handle dealing with the coaching staff, and so you hire a technical director to do it. Maybe you don't want to handle dealing with your coaching staff at all. You've watched this entire video to get to a point where I tell you there's a position that can do it for you, definitely worse than you, but for you, and that is the technical director. And this is where a new attribute has actually been introduced. There is the judging staff ability attribute that the technical director needs to have and then negotiating. And then nothing else is of immediate predominance. The tiebreaker being a better holy trinity in particular determination. But that just negotiating and then that's it. You can put your technical director and staff responsibilities in charge of hiring any number of your staff members that you don't want to deal with. Like maybe your medical team, you don't care. Technical director's got you. Which brings us to our last homie. The, I feel like that's a movie that like Mark Wahlberg's in. The last homie. I don't get it. It was very inaccurate, you know? Which would be your general manager or director of football. Now this person can literally be in charge of whatever you want them to be in charge of that like you don't want to do. I've heard a lot of arguments say, hey, maybe you don't want a general manager or director of football. If you have to pay them a ton of money, I agree with that. There's some that take a couple million dollars a year. You probably don't want those guys. I still send them out to sign youth players. That is a staff responsibility. Uh, they're technically in the scouting team. They are, they're there and capable of putting the team together, which is, 
you know, not surprising. So in the responsibility transfers and contracts, I will give my general manager initiating player signings for the Oriental Dragon under 19s. Now, I don't really care what he has to say about senior players because I figure I'm going to be able to outdo him in that. But you could probably turn this on for se senior players too. Now, I want to have the final say. So I'm still in charge of the final say on the signings. But he goes out and makes initial offers on players I don't even know exist that he thinks would be good additions. Sometimes they suck. Sometimes they're really good. It's basically like having another set of eyes on the scouting trail, a dude that's just looking for signings signings all the time that's the only job I've given him but you can give your general manager any job that you do not want I recommend handling all the jobs yourself almost all of them if you don't want a director of football or general manager that's fine too you don't need one and the same with the assistant manager Whatever you're going to ask them to do in staff responsibilities, whether you're going to go uh, to advice and reports and you're like, I just need an assistant manager who's great at giving me player reports and player development advice, right? You can find them and sign them just to fill those attributes that are important in providing player reports, like judging player ability and potential, right? Now you know what goes into each facet of the game. So whatever you want to use those people for, you can. By the way, please set your report screen, please. This is how I set mine up. Please set yours. Find the best person for all these reports. It might feel like it makes a minor difference to have somebody that's the best giving you your coaching staff report every month, but it could be the difference between signing some great guy and not, or getting rid of somebody or not, or changing somebody's training when it needs to be trained or, or, or changed words or not. Please set your reports. And the last bit of good news is that staff typically is not poached on end of contract deals. So while you might lose a member of staff every once in a while during the middle of the season, you can typically just wait towards the end of the season, all the way to the end of the season, and then just renegotiate your entire staff in the middle of the off season. And life is normally good. I would recommend periodically checking the staff overview as well, because you could be like me and just not realize that your head physio retired or got signed by somebody or something. And just come back here every once in a while and make sure you have it filled in. But you can set this every off season, go into the coach, the training coaching get all that set up get all your staff responsibility set up and then you're ready to go and that is the end of my definitive guide Do you have any questions make sure to join the discord down in the description Discord, hit me up in the comments i'll see you on stream go team